are going to talk about slant asymptotes today. Slant asymptotes tell us about the end behavior of some rational functions. They're like horizontal asymptotes, right? Except that they are on a slant. That's what makes an asymptote a slant asymptote. Let's see what they're all about, shall we? Let's begin our discussion by looking at these three functions. Two of these functions have end behavior that would be described by a horizontal asymptote. One of these functions has end behavior that would be described by a slant asymptote. Pause the video and see if you can figure out which is which. I imagine you looked at end behavior to figure this out, right? So let's go ahead and look at end behavior. So in this one, as x is getting big, 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 if we imagine plugging in a really big number, let's say like 100, that's 200 plus 1. I'm not going to worry about the plus 1. It's about 200 divided by about 100. That's about 2. Let's see if that trend continues. If I plug in 1,000 for x, that's about 2,000 divided by about 1,000. Oh, that's even closer to 2. So to find end behavior, if you recall, we plug in bigger and bigger numbers and see the trend. And I think you will discover if I plug in negative 100 for x, I get 2, about. If I plug in negative 1,000 for x, negative 2,000 divided by about negative 1,000, that's honing in on 2. So sure, this f of x is going to have a horizontal asymptote. Let's look at this picture and actually see what it looks like. Here's f of x. You can see clearly, you can see clearly now that y equals 2, that horizontal asymptote, describes its end behavior. Horizontal asymptotes don't tell me anything about what's happening to the function here, but it tells me what the y value is getting close, close, close to as x is getting really big, and what the y value is getting really, really close to as x is getting really, really negative. Let's look at g of x. So as x approaches infinity, I'm imagining plugging in a really big number. So that's, let's plug in a thousand. That's about a thousand divided by about a thousand squared. Right? Again, I can ignore the other bits because they're trivial if I'm plugging in big numbers. Wow, let's see, that's going to be a smaller number divided by a big number. Let's try plugging in a bigger x. A million divided by a million squared. Holy cow, a million squared is so enormous that that is going to be 0 0.000000001, something like that. I didn't count my zeros, but yeah, I'm getting closer and closer and closer to a y value of zero. So too as x is approaching negative infinity. This will also have a horizontal asymptote. This horizontal asymptote will be at y equals zero. Let's look at this graph. Here's g of x. We can see here the end behavior is indeed described by a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. I'm going to just graph that. Sure, there it is. And remember, sometimes the functions do cross over these horizontal asymptotes. That's fine because the horizontal asymptotes just tell me about end behavior. And lastly, h of x. Well, I warned you. I said one of these had a slant, so I guess it's going to be this one. So imagine plugging in a big number. Let's say 100. That's going to be 100 squared divided by 100. Ooh. 10,000 divided by 100. Hmm. What if I plug in a million? That's a million squared divided by a million. How about a billion squared divided by a billion? Well, I think if you think about this for a while, your outcome, your y value is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So my y is approaching infinity for this one. How about if I'm plugging in negative infinity? Well, obviously I can't plug in negative infinity. Infinity is a destination, not a number, but I can do what I've been doing. Plug in 
really negative numbers. Let's say negative 100 squared divided by negative 100. That's going to be something positive divided by something negative. So I'm going to get something negative. Negative 1,000 squared divided by negative 1,000. The top is getting huge compared to the bottom. If you're dividing a huge number by a smaller number, you're going to get a big number or, you know, big in terms of its magnitude. Obviously, it's really, really, really negative number. So as x approaches infinity, y approaches infinity, as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches negative infinity, my friends, we have a slant. We have a slant asymptote. Let's look at the graph of this function. And here, my friends, is h of x. Do you see the slant asymptote? Well, you don't see the slant asymptote, but you can see that as x gets big, 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 the y is getting big, 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 big. It's going up, 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 this function. As x gets more and more negative, the y is going down, 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 down. Very cool. Let's see what the slant asymptote would look like. And boom, there it is. Now, of course, that slant asymptote isn't part of the function. It's just showing us, it's illustrating the end behavior. And I think you can see that my y value of the function is getting closer and closer and closer to that slant asymptote. So too in this direction, the function's getting closer and closer and closer to that end behavior slant asymptote. So now the question is, how do we find the exact equation of the slant asymptote? Go back to the function and think about it for a moment. Pause the video and really ponder, how could I find the actual equation of that slant asymptote? Do you have any ideas? I'm going to give you a hint and then pause the video again. What does this line, this fraction line mean? What operation? Yeah, division. Hmm, does that give you any ideas of what you might do to find the equation of the slant asymptote? Did you think about doing polynomial long division? That's right. That fraction line means division. So let's divide the top by the bottom and see what we get, shall we? Okay, here I go. X times what is X squared? X. X times X is X squared. X times one is plus one X. And I'm subtracting everything. X squared minus X squared. Three X minus one X is two X. X times what is two X? Oh plus two. So two times x is two x. Two times one is plus two. I'm going to subtract. Now look, I didn't have anything to bring down, but if you want, you can put a little plus zero there. That helps. So I have zero minus two. I have negative two. All right, so I this is my remainder. And it makes sense that I have a remainder here because x plus 1 is not a factor of x squared plus 3x. In other words, it's not going to divide into it. Exactly. You're going to have some left over, right? But basically what I've said is that x squared plus 3x divided by x plus 1 equals about x plus 2 with a little remainder. So I don't know if you remember this from Algebra 2, but I think you did this in Algebra 2, where you rewrote this, kind of like how we rewrite an improper fraction as a mixed number, right? Like five halves is two and a half. We can rewrite this as x plus two plus then the remainder, which is negative two divided by x plus one, right? Negative two, if I kept dividing, would be divided by x plus one, so that's why that is like this. So I used polynomial long division to rewrite this rational function as a linear piece plus a little leftover piece. So part of this tells me the end behavior. So let's think about it. 
if x is getting really, really, really big, what part is significant and what part is insignificant? Yeah, if x is getting big, which is n behavior, like a hundred or a thousand or a million, this thing is going to get closer and closer to zero, and this is the thing that's going to get big, x plus two. So y equals x plus two dictates how the end behavior is going to look. And my friends, that's the actual equation of the slant asymptote. So you find the equation of the slant asymptote by dividing the top and the bottom. You are going to end up with a little remainder, but the remainder affects how the function looks, but it doesn't affect the end behavior. The end behavior is controlled by this piece because this is the piece that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger as x gets bigger. This is also the piece that's getting more and more and more and more negative as x is getting more and more negative. That's how you can find a slant asymptote. Let's go back to where we started. And I have a question for you. Could I have done polynomial long division for these also? And the answer is, yes, you could. Let's just try it for fun. If I did 2x plus 1 divided by x minus 1, what would I get? Well, x times what is 2x? 2. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. I'm going to subtract. That gives me my 3. That's my remainder. And there is my end behavior, y equals 2. How cool. This one's a little more complicated, but this one works too. If I am trying to divide x plus 1 by x squared plus x minus 2, well, x squared times 1 is x. Well, that's bigger than x. So you can think about that going in zero times, and you're only going to have a remainder. Right? That one's a little more confusing. But polynomial long division would give us n behavior in all cases. It's just that we had a shortcut for finding the n behavior when it approaches a constant, in other words, for the horizontal. But if you're looking for the equation of a slant asymptote, polynomial long division will get you that. Okay, have fun with these. I'm trying to tell you something about